Hello. The intent of this video is an introduction to digital circuits. Digital circuits uh, take as input binary values, which have uh, binaries two, so they can uh, have two values. Uh, these could be called zero and one, uh, false and true, low and high, depending on context or depending on your mood. Okay, so this this is just intended to uh, show a brief introduction to such uh, simple digital circuits in this video. Um, it, it is demonstrated in Logic World, which is a good playground for doing uh, understanding digital circuits. I'm just gonna assume that anyone watching is probably uh, you know new to these concepts. I, I hope I am not boring you but let's start with the AND gate. The AND gate has two binary inputs and one binary output. The inputs, by the way, are in this game are usually the long pins here. So we will connect the outputs from our switches into the inputs of the AND gate. Uh, the, the, uh, the way an AND gate works is it's only one if its inputs are both one. So A and B, you think, well, a and B are only true if both A is true and B is true. So when I flip both switches, uh, I get indeed a one. This thing has no memory. It lives in the moment. It's ephemeral. Uh, it just simply doesn't have any idea of what's happened in the past. It just shows you what's happening now. Uh, an OR gate is another very common kind of gate. This game has no OR gates because a single pin that just connects the wires is uh, suitable for an OR gate in this game. In the real world, you need buffers and things like that, but this is you know, a simulation. So we will connect two wires to our quote OR gate, unquote. If I flip this switch to one, the output is one, or that, the output is one, or both, the output is one. So it's, if A or B are true, then A or B is true. It's, it's, it kind of connects back to, you know, reasonable uh, English language interpretations of and and or. Okay, so that's, that's the or gate. Now you'll see in circuits sometimes, uh, an inverted version of, of these common gates. So for example, you might see a NOR gate. Uh, the N means negated. So a NOR gate is an, a negated OR. So that's as simple as a matter of adding an inverter. Oh, wrong, uh, <laughs> wrong thing. So I will connect the output of our OR gate into the inverter. So now it's one when both the inputs are zero. It's going to be zero if uh, any of our inputs are on. This is the exact opposite of OR. So every time in OR gate, the uh, your truth table says this input, this input zero. Our NOR gate is the exact opposite because we have inverted every single scenario. Uh, the next gate that is good to know about is an XOR gate. Now the XOR, uh, the X means exclusive as an exclusive OR. And the way an exclusive OR works is it's like an OR, but if both inputs are true, it's false. And that's what the exclusive part means. So I will hook up my switches and I will show you that if this one is one, it's one. And if that one's one, it's one. But if both are one, it's zero. And with those gates, you can do a lot of things. If you add the inverter, you know, you, you can even do uh, more things. This game has uh, D latches and um, I'm just going to briefly kind of explain uh, D latches. I'm going to see if over here is my D latch. Yes, this is my little D latch experiment. So I'm going to start out with, well, what some people would 
could maybe call the uh, the base uh, circuit in a D-latch. It's called a flip-flop. So it's important to know these. Uh, this is a very common pattern in digital logic is the flip-flop circuit. The flip-flop circuit has two inputs. It's got a set input and a reset input. And it's got two outputs. They're usually called by Q and uh, inverted Q, where the Q has a little line over the top. I, I can't draw pictures, but you can certainly look up uh, flip-flop online. OK, so what you have in a flip-flop is you usually have your switches in opposite positions. Now, right now, let's just call that set. It doesn't matter which is which in our in this exact case. So we'll call the one on the right set. But then if I uh, do the other one, that would be you know our, the reset. And, and that's why this is called like an RS uh, flip flop. Uh, so basically. Um, you uh, what you have here is it, it flips state. It changes state when I change the state of the switches. Now that in itself is not spectacularly interesting, but that is the root, uh, the basis of a D type flip flop. A D type flip flop I think is a little more interesting because you'll see this used in any number of uh, cases, uh, any number of circuits. So this thing has a RS flip-flop on it. I basically copied this circuit identical, put it on this board, and then it has some additional circuitry. Uh, it basically has a uh, two AND gates, and the AND gates are driven off of our inputs from the data and the enable here. Uh, the data is what we want to happen, and the enable is uh, when we want it to happen. Put it that way. So let's start with, I'll just hit the enable button here. The enable button goes to the enable line, and it basically enables this thing to change state. Now, for purposes of this circuit, just assume that this pin here is our output, and we don't care about the one to the right. So I'm going to flip this button here. And our pin here went to zero. So that's that's what we wanted. And then if we turned our data to one, now when I hit this button, it should save the fact that I now have uh, one on the data line here. So that's what it did. It changed to one. And that is in the game as this little green box here, uh, this little D latch here. This tall pin here is the enable line, and this one down low is the data line. And it does exactly what this thing does. And this, for example, could be used to store a value because it remembers a value unlike the other circuits we looked at. I'm just going to show uh, one more simple circuit here. You've probably seen it maybe, but in case you haven't, I'm going to demonstrate the HAP adder. I already have a video on it. But I thought to make this sort of complete introduction, I'd show, you know, the simple circuits here. And the half adder has two gates in it, an AND gate and an XOR gate. Well, I could have just, I'll just move these switches over here. I don't know why I didn't set it next to my switches. Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to hook both of our inputs, consider these two switches as our inputs that we want to add. We want to add two binary numbers. Now, when you add two binary numbers, there's four results. Zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus one, one. One plus zero is one. 
1 plus 1 is 1, 0. If we had a 1-bit computer, uh, that other bit would just get lost. Uh, it'd flip uh, like a carry bit somewhere. But let's just talk about 1-bit for now, uh, and we won't worry about that carry bit for the moment. Okay, so I'm going to hook my inputs up to both gates. And let's just talk about the XOR. And the XOR works perfectly for a half adder because the XOR is one if either inputs one, which is exactly what we want because zero plus one is one and one plus zero is one. And one plus one is zero because we actually carried the one and uh, there's a zero in our, you know, in our answer. So that exactly works. So, you know, I, I've already shown you this, but, you know, just showing again, if I, if either of these two are one, my output is one. If both are one, my output is zero. The AND gate is our carry. It's a carry, it works perfectly because it says I'm only gonna be one if both inputs are one. And so I turn on both inputs and the AND is one. And that's your half adder. Uh, it's called a half adder because a full adder would actually have two half adders in it. And it would have a carry input because if you want, say, an 8-bit number to add 8-bit numbers, you need to both handle the inputs and produce the outputs just like you would when doing arithmetic on a piece of paper. So I think that you know, that, that's a good introduction to basic uh, digital logic circuits. I hope it was helpful to someone.